we found um, cross segments, the um, cost drivers vary and they also have different uh, distribution of uh, cost of injuries. For example, hotel food service has the highest losses per payroll among all segments in the restaurant industry. Welcome to the Self-Insurance Podcast brought to you by CRNBC. Every two weeks, we are interviewing restaurant owners, industry experts, and brokers to explore the world of self-insurance for the California restaurant industry. Hello, and welcome to the Self-Insurance Podcast by CRNBC. My name is K.S. Stanley, and I am the CEO and board chair of CRNBC, which is California's only restaurant workers' compensation self-insured group. And we started this podcast to talk about everything related to restaurant workers' compensation. As restaurant owners, we typically spend most time focusing on the things that either cost us the most money or make us the most money, like our food costs and our labor and things like that. And we ignore the nuances like workers' comp until it becomes an issue. And we don't expect every restaurant owner, every broker to become an expert in all things workers' comp, but we are because that's all we do. And so we are providing this podcast to dive into the nuances that have a really big impact on a restaurant's bottom line, but we are providing the information to you before it becomes a problem. Today, we're going to talk about a big change that's coming to workers' comp in California that's affecting restaurants in this coming year, 2024, and that's the new classifications. And we're joined here today by WCIRB, Julia Zhang and Carrie Kosnick, who are, thank you for uh, joining us today. We, they, I'll introduce them in just a second, but I wanna tee up what we're gonna cover today. There, there are new classifications in the restaurant industry, and we're going to talk about what those are, how they impact you, how they're going to impact you moving forward, and the restaurant industry in general. So first of all, let me introduce Julia and Carrie. Thank you so much for joining us. Julia is the Vice President of Data Analytics for WCIRB, and Carrie Kosnick is the Associate Director of the Classification and Test Audit Department at WCIRB. Thank you both for being here today. Thanks for having us, Kea. Thank you. So glad to be here. So, Julia, can we start with you? First, can you tell us what is WCIRB and what purpose does it serve? Definitely. That's a great first question. Uh, so, WCIRB was established a long time ago in 1915, and we are a licensed rating organization in California. We collect a statewide co uh, workers' compensation data in order to provide several core functions to the industry. We develop advisory procurement rates by industry classification. We propose revisions to enhance the standard classification system. We also calculate experience modifications for eligible employers. So that's a quick summary of what WCRB is. Perfect. And you are the, you're the data scientist that led the study on the new classifications. Can you first tell us what are, what are the classifications? What does that mean? Definitely. Uh, I think I alluded to that in my short intro to, uh, of the WCRB. So the standard classification system groups businesses with similar operations and similar exposure to workers' comp losses together. Each classification has a four-digit code, and in total, we have approximately 500 industry classifications. And employers in the same classifications uh, will have the same advisory procurement rates, which presumably reflect their um, uh, homogeneous risk to workers' comp losses. And you led this study that started in 2021, I believe, to look at the restaurant classifications. Can you tell us first, what, was the, what, what prompted that? What was the problem that you were looking to solve? And why, why was that study even done? Yeah, that's a good question. As I mentioned, employers in the same classification have the same advisory procurement rate. But as you can imagine, industries evolve over time and some classes may become, may not actually reflect the current industry trends. And that's exactly why we were looking at the restaurant industry. Um, restaurant industry is really large and has high impacts uh, in the economy in California. But in the classification system, we only had two classifications for the entire restaurant industry. Classification 1979, uh, which is for restaurants that prep hot food. 
The other one is 8078, uh, which applies to sandwich shops, coffee shops, and ice cream shops. There have been um, particular concerns about 9079, um, particularly operations assigned to 9079 may not be homogeneous, may not have the same workers' comp risk exposure. Um, so we initiated a multi-year effort to identify potential distinct segments within 1979. Uh, the outcome of our research is that we split 1979, really big class, into six new restaurant classifications, including bars and taverns, fast food, full service, caterers, uh, hotel food services, and all others in the catch-all classification. And when we were talking before this, you were explaining that the restaurant industry actually makes up, you said, about 20 percent of employers in California. Yeah, exactly. So 1979 actually represents 20 uh, percent of California employers. And every year, I believe we have more than 50,000 policies written with that classification. So it's a very huge class and it includes very diverse restaurant operations. And so we started that study and uh, the outcome is we were able to identify distinct segments and uh, created new classes. And so when you created, when you figured out these new classes, were you able to differentiate different risks and different causes of risks within these different classifications? Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. We, um, in our analysis, we reviewed operational characteristics. We also reviewed loss and payroll experience as well as claim characteristics such as leading types of injuries. We found um, cross segments, the um, cost drivers vary and they also have different uh, distribution of uh, cost of injuries. For example, hotel food service has the highest losses per payroll among all segments in the restaurant industry. And we found that it's driven by higher frequency of strain injuries, slips and falls. And these injuries also tend to incur higher workers' comp losses than the same type of injuries in other segments. And we believe the pattern is potentially related to some unique aspects of hotel food service, such as room service. Um, we also found that food service restaurants have the lowest losses per payroll, uh, mostly driven by lower claim costs, uh, potentially because injuries were less severe. What surprised you the most in this study? Uh, I would say overall patterns are pretty consistent with our expectations. Uh, if I need to, you know, uh, share something really surprised me is related to the caterer uh, segment. So we have a new class for professional catering, and these are business operations hired to provide food services at event locations. And we initially thought that these operations may involve more motor vehicle accidents because the catering's crew may um, need to transport food to the event location. However, in the data, we didn't really see a significant uh, exposure to motor vehicle risks. Um, about 1% of all claims from that segment involved motor vehicle accidents, very similar to other segments. So I would say we were surprised by the pattern uh, but that's what the data tells us. Mm, as more data reported to the new classifications, we will be able to monitor the patterns and maybe dig into that pattern a little bit more. Thank you so much, Julia. And obviously, as a carrier, as a, as a self-insured group, we're very anxious to look at this data and to be able to determine uh, you know, the different risks among different classifications so that we can make strategic decisions. But Carrie, I want to go to you now about how this impacts the broker and the restaurant owner. And so can you tell us, so you're, you're focused more about the, the rollout. Can you tell us um, what this means in real life, like to the restaurant owner, to the broker? What do they need to know today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these changes were included in our September 1st, 2023 regulatory filing, which was approved by the insurance commissioner, but it will not be effective until September 1st of this year. Um, because as Julia mentioned, the restaurant industry in California is significant and there are far reaching changes. So in real life, this means that um, any workers' comp insurance policy with classification 9079 that incepts 
on September 1st, 2024 or after will need to be um, instead reassigned to one of the new classifications. Um, so as far as the rollout, this delayed effective date will allow us ample time to conduct that extensive outreach and education to insurers, agents, brokers, policyholders, and um, employer associations just to make sure the industry is aware of all the changes, understands the scope um, of each new classification, and is ready to reassign these restaurant businesses to a new classification. Um, so the WCRP has already started um, rolling out some of those resources to assist in this effort um, on our website. We have a food and beverage landing page, which I'm sure will be linked um, in the show notes. And that's kind of our one-stop shop for all of the online resources that we have available. So any um, FAQ, brochures, infographics, webinars, um, it can all be found there. Perfect. And we will definitely provide links for all of those. Carrie, let me ask you the biggest question that we all have is how is this going to impact rates? The short answer is it will not impact rates for now. Um, these new classifications will be combined for advisory pure premium um, rate making, which means there'll be no impact uh, for from an advisory pure premium rate perspective or experience rating perspective. Um, we wanted to kind of minimize um, disruption to this industry because we acknowledge that the pandemic hit the restaurant industry pretty hard. Um, and we also, before we change or establish new rates for each of these um, new restaurant segments, we wanted to allow time to collect pandemic and post-pandemic data. Um, and so that will allow us time to do that. Uh, we won't begin to receive that data, though, until probably the second quarter of 2026. Um, but once we do start receiving that, um, we'll be analyzing it and we will report back on um, the payroll and loss data by classification to determine whether different advisory pure premium rates are appropriate. Um, and then um, any findings will be published, which can be useful to brokers, agents and restaurant owners for, you know, their own curiosity or for their own, you know, operations as well. So right now, today, you have the floor. What is the message you want to get out to brokers and restaurant owners about this? We just want to make sure that everyone is aware of the upcoming changes and is ready for September 1st um, and beyond. And so if any brokers or agents also work with clients that are in the insured market, um, they can start having these conversations now and assessing what changes might need to be made to their upcoming policies to um, see which classification will be assigned. Because ultimately, um, the bro brokers and agents are kind of the boots on the ground, the first um, level of that data collection process. So if we start getting those processes, the policies written correctly with those new classifications, we'll start collecting that data. And then Julia's team will start analyzing it, reporting back, and then we can provide more, um, more accurate analytics. And that's what we use in our data for rate making purposes, more accurate rates down the road. So just so that I recap my understanding of this is the it starts in September September 1st 2024 it's going to be just data collection between 2024 and 2026 then it goes back to Julia's team where they analyze the data that was collected but then at some point that will impact rates somewhere down the road. Whether yes, if the data shows that the there these distinct classifications do have you know different losses as we as um, Julie collected in the um, in the initial phases of the study, if the pandemic and post pandemic lines up with that as well, then that 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 could be that could happen in the future. Yeah, Julia, do you have anything to add on that point? Because I think you said you're already seeing some of those things, so you you fully anticipate some some changes to come from this. Right. Reiterate what Carrie said. Uh, the data that we use for our initial research is um, pre-pandemic, and we've heard from restaurant employers that there are emerging trends in the industry because of the pandemic. And we want to, you know, we want our data to capture those new trends um, and be able to evaluate if a differential in the rates are appropriate. Thank you so much. And obviously, again, I said earlier, as a carrier, I also look at it from a different a different viewpoint where I'm excited to see this data so that we can make different decisions on our loss prevention and safety programs 
uh, when once we know, you know, this category has this loss caused by by this, you know, frequency or whatever it is. So I'm very excited to get that data. And is that I know that's not the main thing WCIRB does, but will you be sharing that level of data to to us? Yeah, as we collect sufficient data in the new classes, we plan to publish our findings about the different risk factors uh, in the new classifications. Um, and I believe the information can be really helpful for all restaurant owners, whether they are in the insured or self-insured market. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, well, Julia and Carrie, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, is there anything else that I didn't ask that you want to sh that you want the audience to know or that you want to share today about, you know, this incredible work that you've been doing um, or anything else you want to share before we wrap up? Um, I don't think so. Just stay tuned on our website for any of the um, resources we have coming out. Like Julia said, any of the um, publications or findings that come out on future studies will all be there. Yeah, Carrie summarized it well. Thank you for joining us on the Self-Insurance Podcast brought to you by CRNBC. If there's a topic you'd like to learn more about or if you have any questions, please email us at info at crnbc.com. Make sure to subscribe, comment, like, and share. And please join us again in two weeks for more self-insurance insights.